Within a few years of the arrival of Islam on the Arabian Peninsula, so much wealth existed that few poor people could be found to receive welfare payments. That was a cash surplus society, one in which interest-based mortgages and personal overdrafts simply weren't needed. It's hard to imagine that kind of life now, of course. We've lived for so long in an interest-based economic system. 300 years ago, when those early goldsmiths combined usury with money creation, it was perhaps difficult to foresee the consequences of their invention. Today, alas, those consequences are available to see everywhere. The rich people of the world go to bed suffering the stress of debt as much as the poor people of the world go to bed suffering its hunger. It's rather sad that every time we have a financial crisis in the world, it's a group of bankers who are asked to come up with the solution. It's rather like putting the fox in charge of the chicken run. Banks make money out of people being in debt. It's just not in their interest to reduce the overall level of debt. So the solutions they bring to the table aren't really solutions at all. Like cough medicine, when what we really need is to give up smoking. I joined the Islamic banking movement in the 1990s in the hope of bringing a genuine alternative to the debt-based system that I'd grown up with. But what I found was my Muslim colleagues entering into Islamic triple contracts, following the footsteps of their Christian predecessors. And in this, they were being encouraged by some of the world's largest interest-based banks. We need banks, of course, to transfer money from A to B, to look after our valuables, to give us financial advice. To all of these things I say yes, and to the technology that goes with them. But to money creation, for the sake of profit, I say no. This is a monster we can't reform. We simply have to defeat it, because if we don't, it will defeat us.